Hey everyone. In this video, we're going to cover some quick tips for folks starting out on ATS or ETS2 and are confused about the console or are curious about how some of these videos and photos are shot from outside the truck in non-traditional locations. Let's check it out. All right, first we're gonna to need to text edit a file in your My Documents folder under American Truck Simulator called config.cfg. Once you locate that file, you're gonna go ahead and look for these particular locations. So on in mine, it may be different on yours. Line 99 happens to be G de underscore developer. This should read one as it is here. By default, it is zero. Then down at the bottom, 149, line 149, you'll see you set G console and then one. That's turned on. It's defaulted to zero. So set those two things to one, save the file, and then you should be able to open the game hitting the tilde key which will open the console and we can get started on the other portions of this video. All right, so let's have a look at the console and what you can do with it. First, we're gonna jump into the truck. So once I press the tilde key, you're gonna see over on the top right, all of this here. And it looks like we have some errors, uh, but I am on the 1.39 experimental beta at this time. Um, so we don't really need to worry too much about that. Now, I think some of the best parts of this game are exploring in a way that can get you an excellent shot or an excellent video view or what have you. Um, that all begins with the developer camera or what they call the debug camera. So if you press your number key zero on the top row of your keyboard, all of a sudden you're going to be underneath the truck. If you use your number pad, as long as you have a full-size keyboard, you can fly around. Now you notice it's like super fast. So this is how you, folks set up super duper shots like this. So they'll fly up here say on top of this container or something and then they can take a shot uh, a photo from up here now we haven't really done anything other than fly around a little bit but there's a few other items on this that we're going to need to know uh, one of them is fly speed so as you are kind of flying around a little bit you'll notice that it's either really fast or really slow now now i've slowed it down now how did i do that like i can go in a complete crawl so i can make i can record a video as i am right now just like this like a nice slow flyby of the truck and trailer how do i do that well it's the camera speed it's G underscore fly speed. So G underscore fly speed, and then a number. So now when I go, it's gonna be super fast. If any of you are fans of DOS, if you press the up arrow, you'll get the last command back. So let's make it 10. Let's 
It's definitely slower. What if I do G fly speed one? There you go. So here's your super slow video as you go by the truck and so on. Now, I can change it on the fly. How do I do that? With your mouse wheel. If you mouse wheel up, that's increasing the speed and down decreases the speed to slow it down. It'll go all the way down to one and up to something like 2000 if I recall correctly uh, which is really way beyond fast for what you need the next trick that folks don't really know too much about is when you get your truck stuck or in a place where you can't back out or there's been some damage sometimes it gets kind of holed up when you've kind of crashed into another truck or something of that nature and nobody's moving you get traffic behind you and things are just not progressing or you're stuck in some fashion on that truck or whatever it may be so you can hit the rescue button f7 um, but there's also another key that will reset your truck to a new position the only difficulty that you have to remember is if it's a truck with a trailer on it and you press this button the trailer will be behind you so anything that is behind you that is not in an open space uh, the trailer will hit and then be, cause damage to it and so on and so on so you just want to be mindful about how long your trailer is when you do this um, but if you press the f9 key it'll refresh your truck to the place where your developer camera is if by chance you drop your truck from up here by pressing F9 right now it's going to be damaged so I got 8% damage and now I'm on this fence so these are the things that we need to pay attention to when we use these functions they are super useful but if you use them at the wrong time um, you can do some damage to the load and, and the truck that you're that you're in. So you always want to be wary of that. Another super handy feature that I can show you in this game using the console is say I find a job. I'm looking for a job in Spokane, but they don't have what I'm looking for. But they do have it in Lewiston. Say it's these metal coils. If I select this, it's gonna chart the map. Now it's gonna expect me to drive Bobtail for three hours, it says, two hours, 56 minutes. So in order to overcome that, what I've done is I don't do this often, but when I have to, it is something that's pretty easy. So um, if we check again our map, we can look where we need to go to Lewiston. Okay. So if we go, go to Lewiston and then close the map. We're going to be floating in midair above where the developer has placed kind of the center of the town. So in this case, now we can easily get to our load without driving there. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're in fly cam right now, so we can increase the speed. We can look for our red line and see where we need to pick up the truck or the trailer and then head right over here a stealer and then f9 go back in the cab and it's saying to you press 
the following key to view the job offer. And there it is. Go to the freight market and you can see it's selected. So that's a super easy way to get to your next job. Um, if it's something that you, you're really looking for that specific trailer or that specific load and it isn't around you and you don't feel like taking another load there to do that, um, this is kind of a fun way of being able to get there quick and not having to kind of bobtail around or deadhead um, depending on whether you have an own trailer or not. So something to think about. I know a lot of streamers and a lot of video makers do it all the time. Uh, it makes for a super clean cut video if you can uh, position your truck in the correct location and uh, make everything look super sharp as you're doing it and you've not put any miles on your truck. Um, streaming is a little different because you do it in front of people so they'll be able to see that you're kind of cheating the system but nice and easy with uh, video making you can cut all that fun stuff out. If you don't really want to work at night, say, let's move our let's move our truck to a new location. I can drop it right here. So I don't like to work at night, really. Um, maybe I have kind of an older computer doesn't deal too well with flares, or I'm using a truck with a lot of flares on it, and I don't want to I don't want to have the lights on during the night, especially when I'm recording a video, it's going to cause more frame loss, etc. What you can do is G set time and then whatever time you want it to be. Uh, it's a 24 hour clock, so I want it to be 11 a.m. There we go. Nice and bright outside. ready to go pick up our next load. Now, the only caveat to this is that once you've pressed this button, it advances time. You cannot go backwards in time. Time is over. You can't get back to where you were. Uh, think Spaceballs when they're doing ludicrous speed. You can't get back there. Um, so if you have a load on your truck and you advance time, your load's going to be late. That's just, there's no two ways about it. Um, so just remember that if, if and when you do use that function to uh, the G underscore set time, uh, if you change that time to any time other than like a few minutes in advance of where you are right now, it's going to affect your load time if you have a load on you. And finally, My favorite that I just recently learned uh, from Jay Ritter on the forum is G underscore show underscore say game underscore elements and then zero or one. Now one means it's showing the elements, which is the default. If I press zero and then I look back over there, there's no green box where you can go pick up where you can go get your load. And you're thinking to yourself, why would you want to do that? Well, when you do this, you get super clean pictures. So if you um, say you're in the yard over here, let's do that. We'll come over here to the yard. Whoa. Let's try the other way. All right. So when you have this off and you're in the yard, you get no, no icons in, on the map. So you can make it a lot more realistic looking um, when you're taking shots for, or even if you're taking a video from like a location like this, or um, if you're doing screenshots, you can get super realistic looking pictures without the blinking green thing uh, in the background. So 
super key uh, to turn it back on. You just change the zero to a one. And then if we fly over here, you'll see that the green marker is back over there. So that's my console commands video. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and that you learned something new today, especially, and I hope that you'll be able to implement any of these things in whatever video and or photographs that you're going to be taking in the game. Let me know what other videos that you'd like to see on ATS or ETS2. Thanks. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.